Welcome to Dig Deeper, a Leaky Foundation videocast. My name is Beth Green, and today we're talking with Dr. Leslea Lesko. My name is Leslea Lesko, and I'm a professor at the University of California, Berkeley, in the Department of Integrative Biology. And I'm really interested in how genes influence skeletal anatomy and how that's evolved through time. So why is this type of research important? What can it tell us about ourselves and our evolution? I think the study of human evolution is really important, um, one, because it's really interesting, but two, because it tells us a lot about why we are the way we are, and the benefits to understanding that are nowhere near fully recognized. Basic biology provides us with information about how the world works, and it's years and years of basic biology that then become applied biology or applied sciences like the internet was work that was done for years and years and years before it had a practical application, before there was money to be made from it. And I think evolutionary biology is a discipline um, still in its, in its infancy. We're still figuring out how things happened and the impact um, of that will be, will be forthcoming, but it may be for a little bit longer. So evolutionary biology is a basic science as opposed to a science, um, an applied science. Who or perhaps what inspired you to get into this field of research? I do work in two different disciplines, basically. They're synergistic, but in many ways distinct. And one of them is in understanding how genes basically make organisms and how that's changed through time. And I was inspired in graduate school, basically, by professors and, and visiting lecturers. Uh, the more, perhaps the more interesting story of inspiration happened when I was an undergraduate and I had the chance to go to a field school. So I actually went to Kenya, to northern Kenya, up to visit Kubifora, and a moment that will always stick with me was following Craig Feibel, who's a geologist at Rutgers University. And he was taking on these us on these geology walks. I loved the geology walks. And one of them, you walk over these huge, round, sort of like boulder things, um, and there's just all of them across this big area, and you're you know, jumping from boulder to boulder. But they're not boulders, they're fossils of algae. So they're these big algae mats that you can walk across, and just, it just really struck me, this, this sense of time and, and geological time, and you know, what a little blurb we are in the whole history of life. And that really stuck with me for, for having a love for the field work side. Have you ever had a eureka moment? What was it like? Oh, wow, eureka moments in research. I think there's a bit of a, uh, a romantic notion that science happens like that. <laughs> because most of my eureka moments probably took about a year. <laughs> you know, I, for example, I've been working on this, this one project that I had initially proposed as my dissertation, and it has now taken me about 15 years to do. Obviously, it was a little ambitious for a dissertation. And a paper that we've I worked up, ended up working up with um, two of my graduate students, my senior graduate students. Uh, we submitted, we intentionally, we wanted to, initially wanted to submit it about two years ago and got delayed and got delayed. We weren't really sure what it meant. We kept going back to the results and thinking, no, that can't be right, and doing another set of analyses, and then, no, we need to look at the data a different ways. So we actually went back to the specimens, collected more data, you know, analyzed them in a different way, and then, so all of this back and forth. Um, and this is a manuscript that we actually just got accepted yesterday. <laughs> so it takes a long time sometimes. <laughs> what is your favorite thing about being in the field? So I have two things that I love about being in the field. And one of them is that sense of time, of being part of something that's so much bigger than yourself. Evolutionary history, being part of geological time, and that's very humbling and wonderful and freeing. <laughs> and then the other thing that I love about being in the field uh, is that you know, I'm there doing paleontology, geology, you know, we're very specific tasks. You know, we get up in the morning, we do this and we do that. But we work with people who live in the area. And so it's this amazing cultural experience at the same time. And it's very different than when you go as a tourist or you know, e even as a uh, you know, visiting student for an extended period of time. It's really different to work with people, where you have a project, you're trying to get a job done, and you're doing it together. You experience their culture in a way that, that you, you would be very difficult to get that experience in other ways, and so you really get a sense of what they're like, 
make friends in another culture that's so different than yours and really get a feeling of you know what it is to be human what is that common humanity that crosses discipline crosses cultures I mean um, and that's one of the things I love about being in the field as well what do you think makes us human the question of what makes us human is a really difficult one to answer so I got really interested in cultural anthropology when I was an undergraduate student. Loved learning about different cultures, what was similar, what was different. And in many ways, that's trying to get at that question of what's essential about humanity. Um, that's kind of a hard thing to answer. So then, so then I started getting interested in, in archaeology and looking back through time and, and what was it about these different people that lived ages ago. You know, what were they like and what were their lives like? But still, there's a lot of stuff you can't answer with archaeology. So then I turn to biology. What is it um, in terms of underlying biological mechanisms that make us do the things that we do and look the way that we look? And I have very intentionally found myself veering towards questions that actually you can answer. So today, I work on how genes influence variation in your teeth because there's an answer that we can actually get at. And the, the answers to what makes us human, I think, are so complicated and probably unanswerable that I'm going to stick with teeth for a while. If you could find the definitive answer to any human origins question, which one would it be? A question about our origins. And it's actually a burning question that I have. It's a little bit different than, than what you've asked. But I would love to jump in a time machine and go back to about 15,000 years ago before plant domestication, before animal domestication, when we were hunter-gatherers. And I would just love to see what was life like, because I bet it was filled with so much superstition and, and such a different view of the world than what we, especially we as scientists, have today. I just can't even imagine what it was like. And I would love to know, because that was, the, that was what being human was for most of, most of our, our time on this planet.